welcome back to my channel. I thought I would do something a little bit different today. I'm currently sat in my kitchen. I'm indoors with a nice cup of tea. It is absolutely freezing outside. It is minus one. Um, everything's frozen solid. I'm so glad I fleeced my ranunculus and my greenhouse last night because yeah, it's just so cold. It's too cold to do anything. Ground it, like I say, the ground is frozen solid. I can't build the beds. I've got some bare root roses that desperately need to go in the ground. They can't be done until it warms up a little bit. So yeah, I just thought I would film a little video answering some questions that I get a lot. And rather than it just be a boring video of listening to me talk, I am going to overlay lots of clips so you can see over the past year, everything that's been going on really. The most common question I get asked is how did you get into doing what you're doing? How did you become a flower farmer? How did you get into it all? Tell me all your secrets. What did you do? Um, and the answer is nothing special really. I just decided that is what I, the path I wanna go down. I don't have any previous horticultural work experience. I have just a lot of my own personal experience from growing plants, flowers. I used to grow some vegetables. I've never actually grown flowers before. Flowers was, I just used to buy them in the garden centres and never grew them from seed. So I won't focus too much on the why I started becoming a flower farmer. I'll focus more on the how. Someone said to me, do you need lots of like money? And it seems like you do to invest in things like polytunnels and stuff. But I know so many flower growers and flower farmers that don't have big polytunnels, that don't have heated greenhouses, that don't have a massive growing area. I know successful businesses that are just doing it from their own gardens. And sometimes their gardens can be quite small. So in answer to, do you need a lot of land? Do you need a lot of money? Like the answer is no, no, you don't. You can do it on such a small scale. I know people that have really successful flower businesses doing it from an allotment. Some people have allotments. My first year I did it on absolutely zero budget. I didn't have any money, so I did it on nothing. And then this year I've managed to invest all the money I made into expanding and yeah, investing in things like polytunnels and stuff. But you don't have to buy things brand new. You can get a lot of this stuff on the second-hand market. I was very lucky in regards to stumbling across someone that was getting rid of two polytunnels. So I managed to bag myself two second-hand polytunnels. It was only the frame because the plastic itself was no longer any good. So I had to buy that brand new. But the frame itself, I only paid £150 for them. You don't have to spend polytunnels of thousands and thousands of pounds. I think with the, the plastic and the wood, it does start to add up a little bit, but there's just, there's ways and means around things. And my first year growing, I didn't have a greenhouse. I didn't have a polytunnel. I didn't have anything. I literally just grew the seedlings on my kitchen windowsill. And, and then I chucked them outside the back door, just on the patio to start um, the hardening off process. With regards to, we have a lot of rabbits here. So with regards to things like fencing and stuff, I upcycled a lot of wood that I had laying around. So it didn't look pretty, it wasn't aesthetically pleasing, however it did do the job. It can definitely be done. I do acknowledge, however, that I am extremely fortunate because I do have the land. That was something me and my partner wanted for a very long time. But again, that didn't come easy, a lot of sacrifice. We worked very hard for it. But you don't need to. You don't need a lot of space because you can do things like crop rotation. Once that's flowered and you've cut it and you've used Used it, you can then rip it out and have your next lot grown and ready to go in the ground after. Another thing I was very fortunate of was I did inherit a greenhouse that we had already abandoned on our land. So I just upcycled it and yeah, managed to create a new greenhouse. However, you can get them on Facebook Marketplace for free. Sometimes people give them away for free. They say free to anyone if you come and dismantle it and take it away. You just have to keep your eyes out really. So yeah, it can be done. It can be done on minimal budget. It can be done on minimal land. It can be done with minimal equipment. I think the one thing that you do have to have a lot of is time. That is the only thing. I started up my flower business 
this a few months after having a baby and we'd literally just moved house into where we live now. We was doing a full home renovation whilst looking after a newborn, whilst my partner was working full time, whilst with no support. So time was very, very sacred. However, for my own mental sanity and a way of getting our baby outside, I wanted to get him away from the renovation side of things because there was a lot of brick dust and concrete dust and I was, I was very aware I didn't want him breathing it in. So we spent a lot of time outside in nature and a way for me to just find a little bit of peace. I just started growing some flowers and it was a nice way for us to be together outside in nature and it really helped as well through those first few months after giving birth. It's not always easy for everyone and I think on top of like moving and having a full house renovation, it was a very difficult time in my life. So I found the flowers such a beautiful escape and they were so calming. So I'm very lucky and fortunate that we had that opportunity together. So yeah, I just kind of made the most of maternity while I had it and yeah just started growing flowers realized that sometimes a lot of flowers produce quite a lot of blooms so I was inundated with flowers so I ended up gifting them to a lot of friends and family and just sharing the love really and it was just that moment that I realized this is the best thing in the entire world who doesn't love flowers and that act of giving flowers are such a cheery beautiful thing and it just brightens anyone's day I think that's what I really really enjoyed it was just so rewarding and it was even more rewarding knowing that I had grown those flowers myself from seed the love and time that I had poured into nurturing these little plant babies and these seedlings and then someone else admiring them and appreciating them it just it meant the absolute world and it wasn't until that moment when I turned around to my husband and said Said, I want to be a flower farmer this this is what I want to do so I had no kind of motive to do this like when we moved house it all kind of just naturally progressed I actually don't have any words to describe it how amazing it feels to be doing this just growing flowers and selling them it's just an absolute dream come true to be outside in nature all day just with the bees and the butterflies and the insects and the birds it's just absolute heaven on earth I cannot express how much this means to me um sometimes it it does bring me close to tears. I'm so beyond grateful to be doing this because I really didn't for a long time enjoy my previous job. So this means a lot. I think you appreciate it a lot more. The first year I grew the flowers, I, I just gifted them to everyone. And then that winter I thought, right, I'm gonna do this properly. I'm gonna turn this into a business. I need to get a logo, I need to get a business name, I need to generate some cards, which again, people usually think it's quite expensive, but there are so many wonderful independent companies out there that do business cards for really like reasonable price. And I'd much rather support these small independent firms than these big corporate companies who have lots of money anyway. So just do your research when you're looking into buying things like business cards and, and stuff like that. A lot of people disagree, but I just I think if you want something badly enough you'll go and get it no matter what it takes and yeah things worth having don't come easy otherwise everyone would have them I think it's very easy as well to look at all of the um the pretty flowers and especially in summertime when everything's in full bloom and I'm walking around my field with the buckets and I'm cutting flowers and making bouquets and delivering flowers everyone's like oh my goodness that's amazing I'd love to work outside in the sunshine but obviously what comes with that is a lot of hard work and graft in the winter. I mean, I know I'm sitting indoors today, but it, it is... It's near on impossible to work because the ground is frozen, so I cannot dig for my roses. Obviously, I don't dig normally. Even filling up my seed trays, my seed compost is frozen like a brick. So I can't even fill up my seed trays to sow some seeds. Um, I can't do any potting on because all my seedlings in the greenhouse are frozen solid. So yeah, there are moments when it is quite difficult to work. But when it's pouring with rain, when it's freezing cold, 
There's been times when I cannot feel my fingers and toes. There's a good example of one year, I think it was the beginning of last year, we suddenly got a load of snow and it crushed my low tunnel because I didn't have any like central supports in it. It crushed it. The weight of the snow completely flattened all the pipe and it cr my ranunculus were under there. And we'd just got back from a long day out or doing something. And I went outside to check on them and they were all completely flattened. And obviously the weight of the snow and stuff is quite heavy. So they were getting crushed and obviously freezing, which ranunculus don't particularly like. I did not want to be outside. I was not feeling well. I had a migraine. I was not in a good frame of mind, but I had to do it. I had to, it was either let all those hundreds of ranunculus die for the sake of me going in or get it done. So yeah, I was out there crying in the freezing cold with the worst headache. Every step I took was like a hammer was hitting my head, but I just had to get it done. And I think people don't see that. People don't see the hard work and the commitment and the graft that goes in behind it. I think social media is partly responsible for that. I think on social media, it's easy just to see all the flowers and all the pretty pictures and be like, oh, that's beautiful, I'd love to do that. But then when push comes to shove, actually, do you want to be out in freezing cold weather, in the rain, mud up to your knees, horse poo all over you? It's then like, mm, actually not so much. So yeah, it does have its moments, that's for sure. Um, but that's life. Life isn't happy, perfect all the time. It has its highs and it has its lows. You've just got to ride the waves and just take it as it comes. But I hope it's answered a few questions. And if you have any more questions, please do drop them in the comments box and I will respond to you. I really like engaging with people and because this is what I love and I'm passionate about and I could talk about it all day long and hopefully the weather will kind of warm up a little bit so I can get outside again and I'll be sharing more videos of my next steps of setting up the new growing area. I've had a few ideas as well which I will run past you but thank you so much for watching again it means the world please 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 do subscribe to my channel I really want to grow this and make it just, yeah, make it a thing. But yeah, thank you and stay tuned for more videos. Bye.